Well, I want to bring you a very prophetic event that's taking place right now that uh, is taking place in Russia. But as you know, the, the um, Russian military has taken up residence in Syria and really in several spots uh, in the Middle East. In fact, it's it's noted that Russia is, is trying to make a big presence throughout the Middle East, and uh, there's a reason behind it. Now, whether you know it or not, Russia's oil supply and places to get oil are depleting quickly. In fact, it's predicted that in 10 to 20 years, Russia will no longer have the ability to pump uh, cheap oil from the reservoirs that they presently own. And here's what the Stratford uh, article has to say. It says, Russia's easily accessible oil reserves have long been the cornerstone of its economy. In fact, it accounts for anywhere from 60 to 80% of its uh, national budget. So with the oil prices at the prices that they are right now, Russia's in quite a, a bad spot as it uh, goes with its economy. And on top of that, this coronavirus also has uh, struck a blow. But here's the real problem. It says, but these conventional fields are depleting, leading to the need to invest and expand into more untapped resources. And you know, that's where the Middle East comes in. That's where Israel comes in. Much of the Middle East is probably in the same boat or will be soon enough because they have been uh, depleting their fields as well. But Israel has a tremendous amount of untapped oil and natural gas resources that Russia is very interested in. In fact, uh, they've tried to get in on the uh, oil and natural gas that Israel's found uh, by a lending a hand to those in Lebanon. But going on with the article, it says that this transformation will not be easy or cheap as various factors have led to a poorly optimized oil sector that that's ill-equipped to soften the blow of rising costs. The uh, key to maintaining a strong energy market and securing the capital needed to develop new and expensive fields will uh, will instead rest on whether Moscow can secure its foothold in China's increasingly oil-hungry market. In in any case, Russia may have the little choice but to accept that its glory days of oil dominance and high profit margins are nearing an end. Now, just a little background on this. It says, in the mid-2000s, West Siberian conventional fields revitalized the Russian economy, producing vast sums of low-cost oil at a time of rapidly rising global demand. But 15 years on, many of these fields have since plateaued or begun to decline. New fields have the potential to largely offset this decline, but developing these areas come with higher upfront costs and will also eventually progress to a stage of declining production sometime in the 2030s. To to maintain supply, Russia oil Russian oil producers will thus be forced to explore new avenues of unconventional production in the years ahead, generally situated in the following two categories. Now, one is hard to recover re- uh, reservoirs, and these are located in the Caspian, Black, and White Sea regions, as well as deep drilling in the Arctic, which is currently curbed by sanctions, and East Siberian fields. Assessing these reserves, however, require considerable upfront uh, investment or hefty tax incentives. And here's the second one. It says shale reserves are perhaps more uh, prevalent in in Russia than anywhere in the world with key areas being the uh, Basinov and Dominic formations. But uh, Russia's lack of tools to to efficiently extract the resource due to sanctions combined with poor intra-industry competition has led to a measly output of about 15,000 barrels of tight oil per day at a steep price tag. And if you're a numbers person, here are the numbers for uh, where Russia is heading up to about 2040. As you see from this chart from uh, Stratford, it says that production in their present reservoirs will go down as, as you can see, a dotted black line going up to around $45 per barrel of uh, of uh, cost of extraction. So you can see the cost of extracting this oil will simply be just too great for what they're getting out of it. And that's going to increase as time goes on, as you can see. Now, I didn't say all this to uh, teach you uh, 
the cost benefit analysis of uh, oil production in Russia. But to let you know that Russia will be looking for new places to find oil because that is their bread and butter. That's what runs their engine. For years now, they have depended upon oil and natural gas to pretty much uh, support their vast nation, which is the biggest in the world. And let me go on with the article. It says, internally, Russia is not overly optimistic about how well this transition away from conventional oil fields will occur. In a draft of its 2035 energy strategy, the best case scenario has oil production remaining unchanged, with pessimistic reports projecting a 12 to 40 percent plunge in production. Furthermore, even if volume of output does not change, the price will. Current Russia shale offerings are three times as expensive as conventional exports. While it cost, while its cost will not remain that extreme, uh, Russia prices will continue to rise as total output becomes more reliant on difficult extraction further away from population centers such as Moscow and other places of that nature. And you know, here's another problem that is going to just uh, feed to the downfall of their uh, at-home oil production. It says that Russia's current energy sector is also ill-equipped to soften the blow of rising costs due to the following key factors, and they're big. Number one, Russia's inefficient and poorly integrated uh, refinery network. In other words, the way that they are extracting oil right now is just so outdated that it would cost a tremendous, tremendous amount of money to get it up to date. And their ability to get it to market in a, an efficient way is also outdated and primitive. Now, number two is also a big factor. It says that a lack of globally respected financial institutions. Now, number three, international sanctions, which has prevented the sale of advanced oil extraction equipment limiting Russia's ability to take full advantage of offshore resources or reserves or shale deposits. So in order for Russia to be able to take full advantage of its uh, reserves and resources, it has to have outside help and it's not getting it because of the sanctions, which will uh, quicken their demise in the oil industry. Number four, lack of competition has led to inefficient means of extracting, which means there has been no pressure to innovate in any way internally. And unlike their U.S. counterparts, Russian small producers lack the freedom to experiment. Under this system, there's very little competition, and competition simply is not rewarded. Now in this article, uh, Stratford goes on to analyze what Russia needs to do in order to shore up its uh, oil market. It sees a, the future with uh, the European nations as being the same, but there will be no growth. So they look to Asia to pick up a bigger share of this increasingly expensive Russian oil. You know, that's one of the things that you need to look at is right here is that Russia's oil is going to get more expensive to, con to extract because of the fact that these um, oil reserves are starting to become depleted and it's going to take more inexpensive equipment in order for them to extract it. And, you know, I probably see the United States or someone, uh, somebody else coming in and trying to chip away at Russia's market share. And that's going to leave Russia in a very dangerous position. And that leads us to where we're at in uh, Ezekiel 38, where it says that the reason behind why Russia will lead this charge is to take a spoil. And even though I see Israel as an energy independent country, I do believe that they're going to become an exporter in the next few years on a very large scale. I don't think that their oil and natural gas fines are, are finished or over. I think that over the years, because of the fact that the uh, Arab world has threatened the West, that if they were to come in and try to explore uh, Israeli oil, that they would drop them uh, in a second, has really been a plus for Israel because now they are becoming one of the biggest oil uh, extractors and natural gas extractors in the world. And it's predicted they're even going to become bigger. And I don't think they found everything that is to be found. Even at this point, and I see Israel becoming uh, more aggressive and exploring different areas around their coastline and other places, and they're going to find more oil. And, of course, natural gas as well. And I think the findings that they're going to come across and the potential that Russia is going to see is going to bring about a, a, a spoil that they simply are unable to turn away from. 
And you might say to yourself, well, why in the world would Russia take a chance of attacking Israel, which is a nuclear power nation? Well, I think it's going to get to the point to where that Russia is going to see this as a life and death situation in which they have to have these spoils in which Israel uh, has uh, newly found. And, you know, the Bible also says that God will put it in the heart of this Russian leader to do this. In fact, it will be such a great spoil. I don't know. I, 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 have to, I have to believe that Israel has something else out there they're going to find in the near future. That's even going to be bigger than what they have right now, and it's going to be too irresistible for Russia. And, of course, Iran, they'll already be uh, all hands on deck as far as uh, going forward with this attack. In fact, this is something they'll, they've been waiting for their whole life. The only thing I can see about as far as Turkey is concerned is that they've always hated Israel. And their hatred for Israel is probably going to trump any possible ramification that would come from a war with a nuclear power. And certainly with the uh, power of Russia, Iran, and Turkey, and other nations who will also participate, they simply won't believe that they could even lose. Certainly they will uh, do a cost analysis on how many people will die. And from that, they will see that uh, it's worth going forward with this attack, even in the face of a possible nuclear war. Now, when will this battle take place? Well, that's hard to say. I really believe it's probably going to be in the first few years of the tribulation period. Some believe it'll take place at the end of the tribulation period. And there are those who believe that it'll take place before the tribulation period even begins, maybe between uh, the rapture of the church and the start of the tribulation period. Well, whenever this war takes place, the Bible says that it will happen during the last days. So when you look at the last days, you have to probably look and start from the time when Israel is a nation, which is back in 1948. And from projections, you can probably see that it's probably going to take place in the very near future. And with this information in hand, we have to surmise that oil and natural gas is probably going to play a big part as to why these nations will come down upon Israel. But I thought I'd bring this article to you. Now, if you are not a subscriber to this channel, I would ask that you hit the subscribe button and the notification button and also like this video. And if you don't know the Lord, today is the day of salvation. The Bible says that's the point of a man wants to die. Then the judgment. 150,000 people are going to die today. The Bible says that the, la- that the vast majority of them are going to end up in a burning hell. You simply don't want that to happen to you and you, you that are Christians. You need a copy of my Tribulation Period Survival Guide. Go down to the description section of this video. Click on the link, get my Tribulation Period Survival Guide, and get it in the hands of every lost loved one or friend that you have. And certainly I would not wait another second to do that. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.